Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the fifth Sunday of January 2022. Welcome you guys to this broadcast. Hope you guys have seen the new logo. We see the email about the new logo. We'll get more details about that later on. Um, it's the fifth Sunday, so the youth are going to present their service today. And I'll start off in prayer, and then we'll go ahead and do the announcements. And the kids will do their things. And uh, we're going to have some worship today. Amen. 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 Dearly Father, we thank you for allowing us to come here today. Thank you for the life, health, and spirit that you've blessed us with. Thank you for giving us these youth of this church, Lord, to uh, allow them to have the opportunity to come in and give you the glory, the honor, and the praise, Lord. And encourage us to continue to lift them up. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And now, come on up, sir. Oh, yeah, several of them. Is that one on? You good? Want to try it? Okay. Is it? Is that one time? Casting. There you go. Good morning, everyone. These are the announcements for Sunday, uh, January 30th of 2022. Oh. We will have Bible study on Tuesday at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Weekly equippings, Thursday at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Women's Fellowship, Saturday, February 5th, 2022 at 10 a.m. on Zoom. And then Sunday, February 13th, 2022, Super Sunday Crockpot Cookoff, 4.30 p.m. at 995 North Fenton Avenue, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46219. And then if you want to bring in your donations of warm gloves, scarves, and hats, please see Kanisha Carton, Carson. Uh, Marriage by the Book, Sunday, February 20th at 5 p.m. on Zoom. And then... Save the date, Marriage by the Book, Sweetheart Dance, April 23rd, 2022, 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. Tickets, tickets are available online now, and then Paul Bell. Praise the Lord, church. So I stand before you today to talk about uh, the care package that we send the college kids. Uh, one thing is we will be sending out uh, a set for the kids we already have in March. Parents, please, we're going to be reaching out to you to make sure that all the information is updated. So, therefore, the children will get the care packages. Please do not let them know. We're also asking for donations and volunteers going forward to send our children care packages. Let them know that Word of Faith still cares about them, whether they go to this church or not, or they're in the military. We just want them to know that God still loves them. We've not forgetting about them. Amen. Because they struggle enough with midterms and everything else. These care packages, uh, packages we've got returns saying that, hey, we appreciate it. Uh, they, they, they're they inspired. We just want to continue to do this thing. Uh, just please, if, you, if your heart's there, reach out to me or Sister Vanita. And so we can get your name and uh, make sure we get your children. And if they're in the Army, uh, we want to reach out to them. And just be diligent in doing what we're supposed to do as children of God. Amen? Amen. Zariah's going to pray first before they even get started. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to be here today. Thank you for everyone here. I pray, I pray for everyone at home and online. And 
everyone here and that's not here please guide us i pray that we'll learn something from the word that we will hear today in jesus name i pray amen Genesis, Genesis, Exodus, Exodus Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Judges, Samuel, Ruth, Samuel, Samuel, two. Yeah, of course. We want to start that over again. They're doing the first ten books of the Bible. Okay, so y'all want. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, 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 Guru, Zero, Take It, Samuel. And Jacob is going to read Genesis 1 through He that dureth. Psalms 91. Psalms 91. He that dureth up in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He would, he, I would say of the Lord, he might refuse in my fortress, in my God. Him with our choice. Surely he shall divide, deliver thee from the snares of the flower and from the noses some pestilence. He shall cover these with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. He trusts how. Be, he too shall be thy shot in shield in buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terrors by night, nor for the arrows that flee by day, nor for the pestilence that walk. Walking in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at new day. Oh, Psalms 91, 1 through 6. <laughs> and now we're going to have Makai on the piano, well, organ. Amen. Piano. Uh, when the saints come marching in. Amen. The Lord. Amen. Give, hey, y'all give the kids a round of applause. It takes a lot for them to do that.
I don't know if you all remember when you all were youth and how you, nervous you all were when you all had to do something like that. <laughs> I know I remember that. <laughs> but um, getting them involved is crucial to their spiritual development. Amen? Amen. Um, right now, what we're going to do is everybody get up on your feet. Everybody here at home, we're going to have a little worship, okay? We're going to have a little worship. It's important for us to understand who we belong to. And I don't know about you all, but 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 we need to have some kind of that that sloppy worship, right? That worship where you just give all God all of you and you know that there's nothing else, right? That nothing else matters. Nothing else. Who recognize that he is Lord of your life and that you're only here to worship him. Sometimes we get caught up in the consistent basis that we lose that thought to just fall out in him. Just fall out in him. We lose that. We lose that. And it's important for us to that to where we give him all the glory, the honor, and all the praise. And that, that sloppy worship to where you just ball out and just give it all to him. Just give it all to him. So to help us do that, okay, to show you guys or to get us to that stage, to set the stage of where we just have that sloppy worship, i got a video that I want us to see, okay? Now, it's by Cody Carnes. Cody Carnes. And the song is Nothing Else. You know, some of you know the song already, <laughs> all right? But when you listen to the words of this song, okay, let the Holy Spirit resonate in you. Let it marinate in you. Amen? Amen. Go ahead.
I'm sorry When I forgot the you're enough Take me back to where we start I open up my heart to you I'm caught up in your presence Wanna sit here at your feet? I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never wanna leave. Oh, I'm not here for blessings. Jesus, you don't owe. I just want you and nothing else and nothing else and nothing else will do I just want you and nothing else and nothing else and nothing else will do I just want you And nothing else And nothing else And nothing else will do I just want you And nothing else And nothing else And nothing else
You need help. Was that it? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. He said, I'm caught up in his presence. Amen. I just want you, Lord. When I first heard that song years ago, not even years ago, months ago, I played that song on repeat. In fact, sometimes I'm sitting in my car. I still play it on repeat. Nothing else matters. Mm. Praise him. When we get caught up in our daily exercises of what's going on at work, family life, I just want you. I just want you. Amen. Glory. So for those of you that need that song, I want to play that song again. That's Cody Carnes, and it's called Nothing Else. Amen. Amen. All right, let's do this. Stand up on your feet. Stand up on your feet. Stand up on your feet. We're going to do champions, champions, champions. Champions. Say, I am. A champion. Christ has all my problems. I've overcome now. Now give God some praise. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. Amen. Hmm. Caught up in his presence. Hmm. 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 I just want you, Lord. I just need you. Nobody else, nothing else even matters. More than anything that I can do, Lord. I just want you. Amen. Oh, the next fifth Sunday that we have is in May. It was race, it's race weekend, race weekend. Parents, we want to see more youth involved. We got more youth in this church. I know we do. We need our youth involved because it's through setting this stage, through setting this in environment or in this environment, in this setting, we continue to train them up so that they can go ahead and be a witness in this world. Amen. Because if they are the salt, if you are the salt of the earth, what are your kids then? The salt of the earth as well. Amen. So make sure they come. Bring them out here. Next Sunday at 3 p.m., next Sunday at 3 p.m. on Zoom, we're going to have a church meeting. We're going to talk about the things from the leadership retreat. Uh, many of you see online that we have a new logo. Praise the Lord. Yay. <laughs> Some of you guys can see it up in the sanctuary on the screen. It's a new logo up there. Amen. Um, it's been years in the making, been years in the making. Now, as a church, we've said that there's three focuses that we're going to focus on or the three focuses that we will have going forward. And we hammered this home hopefully in the leadership retreat yesterday. <laughs> All right. I should bring the leaders up here to see if they know what they were, but I won't do that to them. Amen. Because I know they already know it. I know they already know it. I, like I said, we, we beat it at home. So, right. First thing, the first thing, don't sit on your gift. Don't sit on your gift. Your gift is for the edification of the saints. Your gift is for the edification of the saints. So that means that 
if you're not using your gift, if you're not using the thing that God placed in your heart, the, the ability that the Holy Spirit is trying to use through you, you're robbing me of the ability to develop. You're robbing your spouse, robbing your children, you're robbing everyone else as a member of the body of Christ of their ability to grow stronger in the Lord. So don't sit on your gift. Second thing is don't spoil your fruit. Your fruit found in Galatians is what draws people to Christ. So if you have bad fruit, rotten fruit, no one's going to want to participate or enjoy the things that you say that you are enjoying because you're leaving a bad taste in their mouth about what you are representing. When you go to a restaurant, you order the food, you enjoy the food that's in that restaurant, the service that you're getting, the ambiance. If you call yourself a Christian and every time somebody see you, they're getting hatred, they're getting sarcasm, they're getting all the ugliness that you want to show, but you're calling yourself a Christian, that's a disservice to God. And the last thing is grow in grace. Grow in grace. We are people and we will fail. Zariah, you're going to hit Mackenzie. Mackenzie, you're going to hit Zariah. Don't beat each other up all the time. All right? You got to forgive each other, right? Right? Mackenzie, your sister's saying yes, but you got to say yes too. Okay? <laughs> it's imperative that we understand that people will make mistakes. And we have to be willing to forgive them. Jesus says 70 times 7 in one day. 70 times 7 in one day. Amen? So those are the things that we talked about. And then we also talked about the book, Don't Look Now, But Your Attitude is Showing. And I must admit, we had a little activity. Look, I, I, like I said, I made my mistakes, right? Look, Kanisha already laughing. We had an activity, and the, team, the leadership team was broken up into two different groups. I was on one team, and the, the, there was a group of other people. I think it was like seven and seven or five and five, whatever it was. Um, and the task was to go ahead and place a quote from the book with the particular attitude that was also demonstrated in the book or described in the book. And my team lost. And I read every single chapter in that daggum book. <laughs> but they grew in grace, right? They, they forgave me. The thing is, well, see, this is, so that's a good example of growing in grace because even though I read every single chapter in that book and I took notes on every single chapter and every single attitude in that book, there were still quotes in that book that I overlooked because what resonated with me didn't resonate with somebody else. I'll say that again. What resonated with me did not resonate with somebody else. So when we're going through things and we're reading things, be patient in your dealings with other people. That's how you grow in grace. Because the, the, the perception that you may have of the, we could be looking at the exact same picture. In fact, the kid, one of the kids, uh, one of the sermons that the kids really like is when I show the pictures of the different um, portraits of things. The, 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 the mother or the old lady and, and the woman with the scarf. The picture of the lines that are horizontal, but they don't look to be horizontal. They love that because they see the different images in there, and some people get all the images, and some people don't. Me and my wife could be looking at the exact same problem and come up with two totally different conclusions. But we have to grow in grace and understand that, you know what? My eyes are seeing something different from hers and vice versa. That's how you grow in grace, amen? Amen. So next Sunday, 3 p.m., I know it's short notice, but it was important for us to get this out to you guys, or it's important for us to get the information out to you all as members. Next Sunday at 3 p.m., we're going to cover pretty much everything that we talked about in our leadership retreat and the organization structure that we're going to have or that we do have because it's already put in place, um, the goals for this year, the church calendar, a lot of that stuff will be communicated next Sunday at 3 p.m. Amen. Today, we're going to continue our series on the last days, the last days, and worship, worship. 
Now, I'm not going to be before you long. Okay. The reason being is because you need to have worship time. It is a must in your spiritual development. There's no ifs, ands, buts about it. You have to have the ability and the time to get down on your knees and give God some worship. It's a non-negotiable, including kids. You all do it too, or need to do it. You need to get down and pray. Pray. That's right. Like, yeah, I pray. <laughs> I pray don't hurt my sister. <laughs> oh, it's a necess- it's a necessity. It's an essential element of our being. Because by giving God worship, he acknowledges the fact that we recognize that we are not him. And we need him. Amen? Revelation. Revelation. I'm going to read several verses to you. And I want you all to see the common theme. Revelation is where we're going to go to. Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. Open your Bibles. It's the last book of the Bible. Those of you that are new, just... Turn your Bible to the left, open up the last few pages to the right, and you'll be at Revelation. <laughs> the last book in the Bible. Revelation 2. Revelation 2, verse 7. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Now, give you a little background about this. John is exiled on the island of Patmos, and Jesus is having a revelation or giving him seven letters to write to different churches in Ephesus. Now, all are seven churches in Asia, I apologize, from Ephesus all the way to Laodicea. And these seven churches that he writes to, Jesus points out some good in them, some things that they need to improve upon. These churches all represent us today in some way, shape, form, or fashion, because there's attitudes and mindsets that we have that are represented in each of these seven churches. Now, the important thing for us to understand is that in all of that, for every single one of these churches, there's one thing that Jesus says to each of them. One thing that he says to each of them. Revelations 2, verse 7, again says, Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Revelation 2, verse 11, whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Revelations 2 and 17, whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Revelations 2 and 29, whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Flip over to the next chapter, Revelation 3, verse 6. Whoever has ears, let the spirit let them hear what the spirit says to the churches. Verse 13 of chapter 3. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the spirit says to the churches. In Revelations 3 and 22. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the spirit says to the churches. All seven churches have been told one thing from Jesus. Whoever has ears, and every one of you that's in the sanctuary, every one of you that's online, that can hear, that have the ability to comprehend what I'm saying, (laughs) that's what hearing is, you can comprehend what I'm saying. He says, let them hear what? What the Spirit says to the churches. We are the church. Each of those seven churches are represented in us in some way, shape, form, or fashion. But he says, let them hear what? What the Spirit says to the churches. It's impossible to hear if I'm constantly talking. Hence, the need for worship. It's impossible to hear if I'm constantly talking. That's why I love that song by Cody Carnes. I'm caught up in 
your presence. I just want to lay here at your feet more than anything that you can do. I just want you. Nothing else matters. When we sit down and take the time to worship. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the spirit says to the churches. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the spirit says to the churches. That song there is powerful. If you allow yourself to recognize and acknowledge that nothing else matters. Because once you learn or understand that nothing else matters, we can go backwards according to what we're looking for. You can grow in grace. Because by you growing in grace, you have great fruit. Then once you have great fruit, you will not sit on your gift. Amen? Amen? Now, Nari, will you go ahead and cue that song back up again? We're going to hear that song again. I want you to get up and this time understand exactly what you're doing. I know it's such a traditional sermon, and this was not meant to be a traditional sermon. We need to have worship time. Many of us do not make time throughout the year for us to worship. I said throughout the year. I didn't even say throughout the year. If you did it every single day, how powerful would you be? Peter was so anointed with the Holy Spirit that his shadow, his shadow healed. A shadow. He didn't even touch him. His shadow. Nothing else matters. And all of us have ears, so we need to hear what the Spirit says. Amen? So whenever you're ready to play it, go ahead and play it. Take a moment. Give yourself away. Nothing else matters. Your purpose is to serve him. Your purpose is to serve him. Not my own agenda. Not the agenda that I thought I was given. <laughs> not my wife's agenda, not my kid's agenda. His agenda. So as you go throughout your week, as you go through every hour, every minute, we should be able to take a moment to just give God some praise and worship. Take a, take a moment to pause before you whoop your kids. I'm, I said that for myself, too, because I have to do that. Take a moment to pause, give God the glory, and recognize that they're still here, for one. They made a mistake, and I'm here to correct them for their mistake. Because they could be out doing some other stuff, and they are a gift to you. Because tomorrow is not promised. And when we get caught up in his presence, we can hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And you are the church. You are the church. So again, like I said, this is not a traditional sermon. This was not meant to be a traditional sermon. Lord, place it on my heart for us to worship. Because these are the last days, and it's imperative, completely imperative, that you find a way to give God the glory, the honor, 